good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Guy Marshall. I'm uh, Chief Executive of Staffordshire Wildlife Trust. I'm also joined by Nikki Williams from the Woodland Trust, and together we're talking about the, uh, the potential impacts of HS2 on the natural environment, on wildlife. I'd also like to say welcome to Staffordshire. I'm Chief Executive of this county's Wildlife Trust. Uh, we're very much at the centre of England, as Jeremy actually started, Jeremy Lefroy started to use some of my, uh, some of my content, um, because we are at the, the centre of many historic transport routes. Um, apparently, so the promotional blurb says, for our tourism industry, we've got more miles of canal than any other county in the country. Uh, we have got already an extensive rail network, including both branches of the West Coast Main Line, and there's been a lot of widening of that uh, in recent years, which has caused quite a lot of disruption along the way. Yes, we are home to several major A roads, A34, A38, A5, and the list goes on. Uh, and we've also got motorways, uh, adequate motorways, and we've, in recent times, in the last 10 years or so, certainly in the time I've been with the Trust, we've uh, gained the M6 toll. I think we've got 23 out of 26 miles of the M6 toll is in Staffordshire. So we certainly contribute towards the infrastructure of the country for sure. Um, we're going to be in both phases of High Speed 2. Um, and in fact, I think we're going to be the only county that's going to be affected by all three bits, both arms of the Y and uh, the first phase as well. So uh, we're certainly playing our part. I'm, I'm really impressed and throughout all of this uh, that this is almost entirely volunteer led. There are a few paid members of staff here, but generally it's, a, it's about voluntary action. Uh, and as Wildlife Trust, as the Woodland Trust, we recognize the value of volunteers. We are charities. We are very much reliant upon on the role of individuals. We have, as a Wildlife Trust, about 10 volunteers for every member of staff. It also, I think, which has also been highlighted, is that we can all provide different approaches, taking different tacks to try and achieve a single aim. Action groups and other um, groups who are set up specifically for this particular um, initiative can operate in a different way to charities like ourselves and the Woodland Trust when it comes to what our role is in things like a planning function. Um, why is David Attenborough up there? Because a month ago, he launched a report at the Natural History Mu Museum called The State of Nature. It doesn't make good reading. Um, it might look okay out there. The clouds are still grey. I was going to say the sun's still shining, but we have a little bit of sunshine. The clouds are still grey. The leaves are still on the trees. The grass is still green. But wildlife has had a really bad time in the last 50 to 100 years. One of the more telling graphs within that particular report um, is one which shows how 150 special species have done in the last 50 years. And that report starts up at the top left and drops towards the, the bottom right. We've experienced massive declines. As a society, we've been prepared to accept that, it seems, um, which is a great pity, because if that graph had said that is educational attainment in 1960, that's what it is today. That's wealth in 1960, that's what it is today. That's life expectancy in 1960, that's what it is today. We'd all be pretty upset. But because it's wildlife, because it's somehow hidden away there, there isn't this perception that there's anything wrong. Well, there is. And HS2, by dividing up the country, by, by fragmenting the habitats we've got, is going to make a, a no good uh, to, to our cause at all. Very briefly, the Wildlife Trust, we've been taking action for wildlife for over uh, a century now. You can read the, uh, the figures. Um, and we are working to create living landscapes and to help to secure living seas. Having a high-speed railway line dissecting wonderful habitats and countryside uh, that it goes through is not helping to create living, joined-up landscapes. And we work as wildlife trusts locally. Uh, that's one of our advantages. Wooden Trust is an excellent organization established nationally. We work locally, but we can come together on national schemes. We have a national coordinating body, but we can also be flexible. Seven wildlife trusts to work together uh, to uh, lobby around HS2 phase one, similar collections of wildlife trusts for phase two. We have done, uh, we have played our part. We have invested a great deal of, of uh, members' subscriptions across the piece. We were part of one of the judicial reviews. We have sent a letter to the European uh, Commission about the lack of a strategic environmental assessment. Uh, that is in abeyance, I think, pending the result of uh, the, the final uh, outcomes of the JRs. Um, we do provide local support and attendance at community forum. Because we're in um, phase one, we've been attending the Hints forums and also the ones at King's Bromley. 
And we've invested countless days of staff time at many, many different levels tackling all the different issues which are related to HS2. And I think something else was brought up earlier on. It's not just about tackling the issues of HS2, it's what we could be doing if we weren't dealing with HS2. You know, we have a very limited uh, amount of planning support that we can provide in our county, and uh, our point is right, she's over there. That's our plan, that Kate is our planning officer, and she has to do with all sorts of planning issues, um, which I'll go on to in a little bit more detail. So she's part of an organisation, we've got about 50 staff, we do all these things, manage nature reserves, influence decisions on land use, including planning, and we do community and education work. I also put marine work, because I always forget that in Staffordshire, but we do do that in other counties. But planning is complicated, and poor old Kate's got to do it all, so she's got to comment on local plans, but also on individual planning applications. And HS2 is like one really, really, really large planning application in many respects. But, and also there's a variety of documents to comment on these days, like strategic impact assessments, or in this case, environmental statement. You've heard how much there's involved. There's 100 pages for each of the different sections uh, of HS2, each of the community fora areas to read, plus the overarching document and summary at the start. We prefer to work, when we are working on individual planning applications, upstream of a planning application going in, um, not when the eight weeks start kicking in, which can very often be the case. We had to immediately respond to the route of HS2 because we were given no alternatives along the way. And when we do it, we have to do it in a very logical way. Um, we, we have to consider, first of all, what effect it has on protected species, whatever this application is, in this case HS2, what effect on designated sites, and we'll talk about that in particular later on, on BAP species and then on other issues. Our responses uh, are as follows. We can object or put in a holding objection, seek conditions out of the planning application or make recommendations. In this case with HS2, because of the damage involved, uh, we will be objecting to the line of the, of the route. Those objections could result in a scheme, which in this case is high speed two. It could uh, not proceed if our objections were strong enough and listened to. We can ask, um, if, it does, if it does go ahead, that important features, and I'll talk about that in more in a minute, important features are avoided. We could ask for on-site mitigation to take place or off-site compensation. But very importantly, our responses must be consistent and based upon science. So that means that what we say to high speed two has got to be consistent with the sort of thing we'd say for an office block development, for a housing estate and so on. These are the same rules. We can't change our stance because it may be a popular thing to do. We must be consistent and based on science. Our position on high-speed railway, should I say, sorry, is uh, as a concept, that's 125 miles up, as we've heard from Jeremy, not opposed in principle, but we are opposed to this route. Absolutely the case. We think HS2 contradicts the following things here. The Lawton making space for nature, which in, it highlights the value of joined up, of living landscapes, of, of actually making the, the countryside more permeable. And, and Nikki will talk about that far more. Uh, the natural environment, white paper flies in the face of that. International uh, commitments to biodiversity and so on. What impacts is it going to have? It's going to destroy habitats, beautiful habitats, like that lovely coppice woodland. And Nikki will talk in in particular about woodlands in, in due course. But I think wildlife trusts, because we have to be consistent, because we have to work within certain rules, guidelines, those sorts of things, we can't just go off piste at times. But we also recognize that something like this, the common and everyday, an old oak at Stonely Park, means actually just as much to you as a county wildlife site, because you might not know where your nearest county wildlife site is and so on. It's very touching. Uh, every day I go home, uh, I pass a couple of oak trees either side of the road between um, Rugeley and Abbots Bromley. And they've got signs up saying these trees will be knocked down when cut down when High Speed Rail goes through. They're just two trees, but for the local people, they're really, really important. So we mustn't overlook that. Um, we can't say that the same results are going to take place, but in terms of uh, on high speed two, but in terms of um, other evidence elsewhere, you can get an awful lot of direct kills along the, the line you know, of, of infrastructure. Now, again, it all starts to get um, very scientific, uh, slightly boring, slightly dry. Conservationists talk in this sort of language all the time. 
but we are, do believe passionately. With Staffordshire Wild Trust, this is the single biggest deal in terms of a planning application uh, that we are facing at the moment. We have to start considering whether the, the scheme affects European sites, nationally important sites, local nature reserves. We concentrate here around local wildlife sites. And the reason is that sort of thing. I can't give you exact details, I can't remember now, but in terms of international sites in Staffordshire, there's about 10, something like that, about 10. In terms of national sites, there's about 60. In terms of regional or local sites, 800 to 1,000. These are the sites that you have on your doorsteps, far more than the international and national. Those are the ones which are at risk. And those are the ones marked out in terms of phase one. Those are the sites which are damaged. 160 sites of importance have been, are in the line. And in the next phase, estimates are around 200 plus. So this is the sort of level of damage. We, we would get slightly worked up if one county wildlife site is damaged, not 160. So this is way off the scale. You can see the sort of uh, numbers involved here. We just collated a couple of figures in terms of sites damaged, destroyed, or affected within 500 metres of the line. That's just in two counties, two counties which really get a bad treatment in this in phases one and two. In Staffordshire, I'd say we, we get all three bits of it. Um, and you can see that 167 of the 300 plus sites uh, around the country were just in these two counties. But as I say, it may not always be those things which are most important to you. It might be your nearby pond, your mature trees, hedgerows, those sorts of things. And one of the things we've done um, is actually that 16, before, once we found out the route of the line, we did some additional survey work uh, um, at our own cost and established that there are another six sites from the 10 we knew about. So the survey work is absolutely vital. And what's interesting here, there's a very evocative slide and it reminds me of a place called Hints, which is not very far from here, uh, gonna be affected by phase one. Um, Hints is a, a beautiful little bit of countryside in southern Staffordshire, in Litchfield District. It's, got, it's bounded by the A38 on the west side, the A5 along the north side, and the A453 on the east side. It's a lovely little triangle of land. It's small enough in itself, but it's a, it's a beautifully tranquil spot to go to. High Speed Railway is going to sever that in two. It's small enough to start with, and yet we end up with this isolation of habitats uh, that HS2 is going to bring. Mobile species are probably not going to be affected too badly. We've, we know certain species are doing fairly well in the countryside, jackdaws and wood pigeons and so on, but other things are going to be severely affected by uh, the influence of high speed too. But their backsides back of European importance and certainly affected down in the, uh, uh, in the, down in the Buckinghamshire and so on. Uh, uh, bad areas. Now, we've already highlighted many species are going to be affected. Uh, mammals, birds, and so on going to be affected and potentially hit. They may or may not cause, uh, could give us some scope for uh, hope uh, with some new habitats created, but generally uh, a major threat. Here, ground beetles um, find that they can't move readily if there are barriers in the way. Nice shot of different species. Dormouse is one particular species that we are very much concerned about in the north of the county. Uh, we don't have many dormice in Staffordshire, but just up in the uh, Newcastle borough, uh, just as the line leaves the county, woodlands affected dormice there. Great crested newts. Um, one of the things when, when the slide said we're not against jobs and, and growth and that sort of thing per se, we have been as a movement caught up too often in, in the Midlands and particularly in North Staffordshire and Staffordshire in, in debates about newts versus jobs. <laughs> newts have got, uh, it's still getting headlines these days, is it, I think there's a new scheme recently, £80,000 of compensation to move some newts around. But these are of European importance that just happen to be very common in the West Midlands, but certainly at risk. We also are going to lose tranquility, and I think you'll, uh, um, and, and other stuff that we don't fully know in terms of, of, of the effects. And that's where really the impetus is on high speed rail to prove their case as to what damage or not it is, is likely. So far from what we've seen, even though there's thousands of pages of information uh, in the draft environmental statement, it is, very, it is incomplete. 
Um, it is rushed. We have a very short time in which to respond to it. And it makes some quite weak assertions. One of the things is, is about the standard it's going to maintain. This is going to be of Euro European importance, this railway line, but the environmental protection, the environmental commitments are not of European standard. It, they, are, they are not at the moment committing to follow the highest European standards. They're thinking about being, of being guided by UK standards. So there's a lack of commitment there. And one of the things here is, is actually we are working on a 500 meter either side of line. But as you can see from, from other studies elsewhere, um, you can quite quickly, um, it takes a lot more distance than that to, for disturbance not to occur. Uh, in this case for birds and for mammals it's, e it's even worse. So we, you know, the full degree is up to them to put the case to us and at the moment it's a weak case environmentally. All the county wildlife, vast, vast majority county wildlife sites in all of our counties are run through agricultural systems and we should not undermine that you know, underestimate the value of, of agriculture to the future of wildlife in this is country and breaking up the systems again through something like HS2 uh, is it makes no sense at all and it also uh, I live next to the A50 um, just a few miles away from here the A50 is quite a noisy barrier it's um, it's got a concrete surface and uh, uh, we've been promised by our MP for many many years uh, that he will get that changed, put on a tarmac surface. It's never happened. Uh, there is a desperate irony about uh, it all, which I better not sort of go into, but um, it's a barrier. Our, our, residents of our, uh, our residents of our village almost entirely stay on the side that we live of uh, the A50. Very few people go actually go underneath it. It's quite a noisy, loud road. The, the th Pro the the uh, problem about HS2 is it's going to divide up the country. People will not want to move uh, to the areas beyond uh, the, the railway line itself. So in conclusion, um, the line has been quite carefully designed, particularly through Staffordshire. It avoids European sites. There's, there's one not very far away from here, which it could have gone through. It avoids national sites, but what it does do in truckloads is damage uh, our county and district value wildlife sites, causing irreparable damage. So individually, not completely the end of the world, but cumulatively, a major, major impact. And some of the impacts are, are absolutely, frankly, uncertain because we don't have the data. They're not providing the data. We think that ecological impact, therefore, is seriously underestimated. Uh, the, the way of uh, approaching it is flawed. We believe that a strategic environmental assessment should be uh, provided. Um, and that if we're to have sustainable transport systems, they're not to be at the expense of the natural environment. It just flies in the face of any common sense. Um, we also believe that in terms of mitigation and compensation, um, the right costs have got to be built in. This hasn't got to be, I think, for the environment sector, I think we very much, in terms of railway language, the end of the line. Um, we are used to getting... Um, <coughs> inadequate compensation and also there's inadequate follow-up. So for example, I, I'm not aware that there was any particular commitment for the environmental quality uh, and the wildlife value to be brought out of the development of the M6 toll. What I'm equally uncertain about is there's any studies going on now to say what the environmental impact has been. And one of the things we've got very used to through working in the planning system is that all sorts of commitments are made but nobody goes back in 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time to see whether A, the commitments were followed through, and B, that they actually brought the results that we wanted. And we have very low confidence that this will happen with HS2 as well because of the additional costs involved. Um, and we, we feel that there needs to be a full evaluation and EIA before proceeding with any of HS2. So we are against, and I think that's one of the things we want to hear so, you know, in terms of other charities we referred to today about an ambivalence position. We are against the route, and I think we just want to make that absolutely clear, uh, but we're not at the moment uh, 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 against the concept of sustainable transport systems. That's got to, that's got to make sense.